to talk more about this as the program goes on, but I want to hit this issue again of birthright citizenship. You are hearing people who make absolutely no sense on this issue saying that the president cannot use an executive order to address birthright citizenship. Again, my caveat is that I know the courts are going to be hostile to any effort to curb birthright citizenship, statutory or by executive order. But I hear people say a statute would be stronger. First of all, they're not going to get a statute because it'll be filibustered in the Senate. So it's a non-issue. The Democrats aren't going to allow it. They want birthright citizenship. So with the filibuster rule in the Senate, there will be no statute. The president is aware of that. The commentators on TV, even some conservatives, they pretend they're not aware of it. But we're all aware of it. Or would have been done already. These are the same people in Congress who refuse to build physical barriers on our southern border to protect this country and to enforce our immigration laws. Suddenly they're going to pass a statute outlawing birthright citizenship, but why pass a statute? If in fact, as the left says, and some of these conservatives say, because they're know-nothings, that birthright citizenship is in the 14th Amendment, which is what Paul Ryan said. Preposterous. If that's the case, then how is a statute going to fix it? Statute won't fix it, because they're saying you have to amend the Constitution. Well, when's the last time we actually amended the Constitution the old-fashioned way? Or one of two of the old-fashioned ways? Been a long time. Why? Because the left changes the Constitution all the time. And now when we want to address something that they did outside the Constitution, now we're told we have to pass a constitutional amendment. Help, sir. As we discussed the other day, as I discussed, as Daniel Horowitz from Conservative Review discussed with me, Birthright citizenship was not actually implemented in this country until the 60s and 70s, the 1960s and early 1970s, by the bureaucracy. By the bureaucracy. It wasn't in the Constitution. No court ordered it, and no statute was passed. So why do we have to amend the Constitution or pass a statute? Well, we'll have a better chance in front of the Supreme Court. If that's the case, we have no chance in front of the Supreme Court. And as much as this battle over Kavanaugh was so crucial, he's not Clarence Thomas. He's not Antonin Scalia. And neither is John Roberts. It's just what it is. The president happens to be right about this. The president happens to be right about the Constitution. The president happens to be right about an executive order, however it turns out. And all of his critics happen to be wrong. He knows more than they do. As Daniel Horowitz put up there in the Conservative Review today, leftists concocted an ingenious game of judicial supremacism that creates a one-way ratchet for their policy outcomes. Heads they win, tails they win. Yet the so-called conservative legal community chooses to play the game. Nowhere is this more evident than in the debate over so-called birthright citizenship, where the left Cherry picks one non-binding footnote of a terrible decision, misrepresenting another bad decision that violates previous precedent, the plain meaning and purpose of the 14th Amendment, sovereignty, and the social compact, while collectively ignoring endless uninterrupted case law indicating the opposite, all for the political outcome of giving our sacred birthright to illegal aliens. The 14th Amendment. Representative James F. Wilson, Republican Iowa, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee back in the 1860s, who helped draft the 14th Amendment, spoke emphatically that it was, quote, establishing no new right, declaring no new principle, unquote. Quote, it is not the object of this bill to establish new rights, but to protect and enforce those which belong to every citizen, unquote. That's what he declared in 1866. Now, I want you to think about it. How many states would have ratified this amendment if they believed it would be applied to illegal alien babies known as birthright citizenship? Not a one. 
This amendment was passed to protect African-American former slaves, not foreigners yet to be born who have no right to come into this country illegally. Period. The notion that an amendment designed to grant freed slaves who lived here for centuries and had no allegiance to any other jurisdiction, the basic rights of American citizens, would be used as a tool to prevent Congress from regulating citizenship for immigrants of all stripes is scandalous. The first sentence of the 14th Amendment, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. We need not speculate what subject to the jurisdiction thereof means. As I said the other day, Senator Lyman Trumbull of Illinois, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee at the time, said during the debate over the 14th Amendment, quote, Subject to the jurisdiction, unquote, of the United States means subject to its complete jurisdiction. Quote, not owing allegiance to anybody else, unquote. Of course, persons present inside American territory are subject to our partial jurisdiction in the sense that they have to obey our laws and are subject to criminal prosecution for disobeying our laws. But when congressional drafters added the second phrase of jurisdiction to citizenship clause, they were clar clearly limiting citizenship to those who, in the words of one of the key drafters, were subject to complete jurisdiction as Americans. Senator Jacob Howard of Michigan, the principal author of the Citizenship Clause of the 14th Amendment in the Senate, explicitly said that candidates for citizenship must be born here and not owe allegiance to any other authority. Echoing Trumbull, he said a full and complete jurisdiction means the same jurisdiction in extent and quality as applies to every citizen of the United States now. He made it clear Allegiance, quote, will not, of course, quote, will not, of course, include persons born in the United States who are foreigners, aliens, who belong to the families of ambassadors or foreign ministers accredited to the government of the United States. So, simply put, the history of this amendment is not in dispute. It's not in, debout, uh, in doubt. It's not up for debate. So what changed? Nothing in the Constitution changed. Nothing legally changed as a matter of statutory law. In the 1960s, the bureaucracy, under the Great Deal, decided to confer citizenship on babies born of illegal aliens in this country. And now we're told, in order to reverse that, the President of the United States has to push for a constitutional amendment, or Congress has to pass a statute. But he's not allowed to reverse what the bureaucracy did in the 1960s with an executive order. How insane is that? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. I challenge all those who have a different view from me in academia, or practicing lawyers, or former federal this, or former that, I challenge you to show me the evidence in the 1860s that supports your position that birthright citizenship was enshrined in the 14th Amendment. Just give us one piece of evidence. I challenge you to show me any statutory authority where Congress intended and in fact affirmatively granted birthright citizenship to the children of illegal aliens. And I challenge you to explain in some kind of coherent way how something that is done by the federal bureaucracy cannot be undone by the president directing the federal bureaucracy, which is what an executive order is. Now, if you'll tell me he'd have a stronger case if it was a statute, he's not going to get a statute, and I don't understand why that's a stronger case. If it's your position that it's enshrined in the Constitution, then nothing can change it but a constitutional amendment, which will never happen. <laughs> 